Ever since I was a little kid, I've had a little friend that lives in my mouth, and my friend's name is Yaya. Um, he's been there since I was about three years old, and every once in a while, you'll, you'll catch him. And he makes a quick appearance, and he'll say, Yaya. <laughs> and so we had, uh, I think we, I was sitting on a kitchen floor, and we was looking through a dictionary, we looking, really for names, looking for and names, looking for names, looking for names, and I think I may have said, You said Yaya. I said, I just, I was getting bored, so I said, yeah. Well, Yaya yeah, yeah, said Yaya, yeah, yeah. uh -huh. and then we just decided, that's it. That's the name. That there can be no other name, yeah, and, yeah. and that's that's where it came from. We gotta come up with a better story than that. Yeah. Yeah, you need story. a better story. How did this group <laughs> start? The Yayas? Yeah. Oh, you go. What happened? Uh, Hall and I were friends in college. Yeah. What college? <laughs> Hofstra. Jay went to Hofstra too, and we had friends in common, but we never met. Uh, and after college, Paul and I had remained friends, and he plays piano and I sing, and we would do that just for the fun of it. And the three of us were in an evening of one act plays together, because we were theater people. And uh, we met Jay, and Jay said, I play guitar, and so we started playing. You know, when we got together, I, do you know this song? I know this song. And, uh, and that's how it started. Then we learned more songs and said, this is a lot of fun. We should, maybe we should do this out in front of people. <laughs> and that's how it started, really. The three Yas actually all used to be actors. We all used to be in, involved in, in theater. theater. So um, I, I myself went to a performing arts high school mm -hmm. as an actor. Um, went to college for acting and then I moved to New York City and did the starving actor thing. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that um, when we got together and played music. Food is good. It was, <laughs> it was. <laughs> it when, when we started to actually get some jobs, we realized well, you could you could hang out with your friends, you could uh, play music, you get free drinks or fed or and both. And steak. And then they, and, mm -hmm. and often steak. steak. Uh, and then they pay you at the end of the night. And I thought, well, this is a much better deal than the acting thing because there's so little work. Uh, and that was the here. only reason why you chose that? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Took a day to knock it down He watched the whole damn thing His father used to work there Pile of bricks and dusty air For a faded river town Another chance of spring Promises and pretty plans of just one man What do I know, he says Am I just getting old Something gained, something lost Can we afford to pay The price of progress dinner time maybe late July raced his brothers down the street bunch of kids with muddy feet his kids they just stay inside they hang out in their rooms central air and glowing screen Looking for an in-between What do I know, he says Am I just getting old? Something gained, something lost Can we afford to pay the price of progress? Da 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 da.
seems the same But he knows the street name The houses just get bigger Sometimes he feels so small Did his father feel this way? what to do when you decide to go professional and do music for a living. Where do you get the, the empowerment from? Hmm. And you don't have to be a yaya to answer this question. I would love to answer this question. <laughs> you do it because if you don't do it, you're going to go crazy and probably become a serial killer and like become antisocial wacko. And no. so you picked up your guitar. I picked up the bass. You picked up the bass. I'm originally a bass player. And... Um, a kid that I went to high school with who, who plays in bands on the weekends and stuff described me to a drummer that I play with sometimes by saying, yeah, Fred was like, you know, he was like normal and stuff and he did stuff, he did sports and he hung out and then he just disappeared and we didn't see him again the rest of high school, basically. He was in his room with like records and his bass playing along with records teaching himself and that's pretty much was it. And then that's where the whole antisocial thing started. Yeah, that's where the antisocial <laughs> thing started. <laughs> and it just grew from there. Uh -huh. Is this why people join groups? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You mean musical groups? Yeah. So like, you know, yeah. other, we're, other help yeah. programs. We're our, own, we're our own support group. Yeah. We're our own reason to need a support group from time to time. <laughs> but then we have that support group uh, hmm. to keep the vicious uh, circle happening in. All right. Hmm. How does Yaya music start? And let's start with music, with, with lyrics. I understand you're a poet. I've always written, there's always words that pop in. Um, but I don't know that all of our songs start with a set of lyrics. They, they start in, in, uh, in lots of different ways. When we first started out and we're first writing, um, I think there was a little bit of a disconnect in our songs. And we would come at it um, with, you know, a musical idea and that Jay and I maybe came up with. And Catherine would have a set of lyrics and we would just kind of try to mash those together and just join them. Mm -hmm. um, and largely that's how our first album was produced. Um, for the, the album that we're working on now, I think all phases of the songwriter are much more collaborative. Um, you know, we'll have a, a germ of a musical idea that we'll all work on together. Um, Catherine may have a, a small set of lyrics that we'll, we'll try to develop together. Um, and it, lately it's been much more of a, of a weaving process, I think. two brothers they are both older than me we had one amazing mother she was gone at 53 daddy loves his scotch and water counts the ice cubes in the glass Fix his heart with bricks and mortar Safe inside Cause nothing lasts Gotta stop counting up the cost Can't
can't live my life in terms of what I've lost I've got some better things to add up now Living your life by what has passed It's kind of like drinking from an empty glass And nothing tastes like nothing going down So he sits from day till evening in his worn out easy chair Counting days that have no meaning, marking time with no one there She's there when I am laughing, when I make her recipes when I tell my favorite stories All these gifts she gave to me I gotta stop counting up the cost Can't live my life in terms of what I bought I've got some better things to add up now Cause living your life by what has passed Kind of like drinking from an empty glass And nothing tastes like nothing going down I will always love my father I know I can't change his mind I have two sons and one daughter And their mom is a lot like mine I gotta stop counting up the cost Can't live my life in terms of what I lost I've got some better things to add up Paul, do you think that it would be possible for you to play just straight music uh -huh. in the in the in the settings that you play as the yayas with no words? Would they listen? Could you communicate? Um, I think it depends on the venue, um, but yeah, I think I could. Yeah. I think I could. Terrific. I mean, it, you know, if we're playing at a loud, raucous bar. That may get tough after a while. Uh -huh. you know, I don't know how many, you know, raucous songs I can communicate, but uh, yeah, I think I could pull that off. Do you write, Paul? Do you do you write words? You know, like with letters and letters, right? <laughs> um, no, I don't. Um, okay. I, I really don't. I, I I used to try to, um, maybe back in high school and college. Mm -hmm. um, I I just never felt connected to it. Do you write any words? I don't write words. I've written some of the worst songs you'd ever hear, I want to hear one back now. when I used to try and write. Um, and then I stole what I thought were the best parts of those songs and said, hey guys, I got some good stuff. Want to hear it? And, and I would play some of that stuff and let them sort of redo it. 
Um, that Doo 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 song. Yeah. The guitar part from Doo 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 was from an awful song that I wrote years earlier. But, or part of it at least was. It's the last love song you wrote. Hmm. I like love songs. We don't really write I actually songs. don't, I have never successfully written a love song. You write songs about relationships. I write songs, yeah. a lot of the songs are about <laughs> relationships, but that's, that is the human condition is relationships like that that's defining that is that is all we all yeah. we are <laughs> Watching the birds fly And all these people just walk by And I see the leaves are falling from the trees again and I know A bus stops on this corner every half hour or so Going downtown, heading downtown But I keep thinking you're gonna show So I sit here And all these buses, they just keep Stops on this corner every half hour or so Going downtown, heading downtown But I keep thinking you're gonna show So I sit here And all these buses, they just keep coming round, coming round I don't know what's gonna make me happy I don't know what I should expect All I know is that I've been thinking You're the one, you're the one Who's got no time left Cause I know A bus stops on this corner Every half hour or so Going downtown, heading downtown Cause I'm done hoping you're gonna show I won't sit here think that what you're doing is easier to be able to work that out with yourself versus like when, when the three of us we we can't even sit on a couch yeah, and yeah. describe how we write together right no <laughs> it's not easier extent. it's just different and then, you know what i mean and then yeah. coming at it from three different yeah. sides at the same time to, to be I honest wonder what it's like to do it as one person well i mean i have i also have the other things that i do i'm in hope machine and I co-write with Steve Kirkman sometimes, and so we do a little bit of that, a little bit of co-writing, and we bring songs in and work, workshop them, um, and and I play with Gillen and Turk, and we also, there's a collaboration there, but as far as working alone, I mean, I don't know, it's just, it's a different process, you know, it's a different process. Like recently, I had a song I was working on, and I have a drummer I'm playing with a lot now, Eric Puente. And I knew that the bridge of the song wasn't quite there lyrically. 
the bridge of the song was weak. I knew it was weak. I was going to rewrite it. And so when he got to those last three lines, he was playing this big thing, and he just hit this sizzle cymbal, and he let it ride, and he was out. It just hit me like, this is the, mo the universal moment. This is the moment of connection. And it's, he's just handing it to me. The drummer's handing it to me on a plate. Here it is. Like, it's just you, man. Say it. When I'm lost, overcome by memories and questions, when I've reached as far as I can reach, and I can't catch the dreams that I've been dreaming, there's always someone beautiful enough to light the darkness long enough to show me home is in my crowded heart. So in this song, it took that arrangement yeah. to make you understand what you were writing about. In a sense, yeah. In a sense, this, this great musician brought to light what I was really writing about. Sometimes the night literally calls out to me The beautiful shadow women and bar neons glow The tinkle of ice and glasses Different jewels and different boxes All traps for my delicate fingers we will shine and hope that it's enough to make dreams from despair and call the devil's bluff. We will shine. I bang the soul guitar and reach deep into temptation. Let it mingle with the smoke, turning grime to gold. Angels in hell are halos dim in the blackness, pale but shining still. We will shine and hope that it's enough to make dreams from despair and call the devil's blood. We will shine. Sometimes, in spite of the danger around here, through the taste of disappointment and the smell of stale beer, I hear angel voices answering me. We will shine Hope that it's enough To make dreams from despair And call the devil's bluff We will shine To see light darkest corners may be crazy it may be some form of second sight unexpected unexplained it has found us again 
never lost, but always wandering. We will shine and hope that it's enough to make dreams from despair and call the devil's bluff. We will shine. Hope that it's enough to make dreams from despair and call the devil's bluff. We will shine. And hope that it's enough to make dreams from despair and call the devil's bluff. We will shine. Hope that it's enough to make dreams from despair and call the devil's bluff. We will shine. When I co-write with Steve, we don't control it. We don't say, we're going to get together and write, or, or we need to write, or whatever. What happens is, it's usually I, I usually am the, the the person that's got the beginning of it. What happens is I, I'm working on. We've written a couple songs together: "Peace for Christmas" and "Sundancer." And um, I'm working on the song, and you know, it's either for starters the music is just crap, all right, or it's just there's. There's a good skeleton, and, and I'm just having a hard time with it, and I realize Steve's got something to say about this. And I put it, the email, and I send it to him, and then I get something back, and I go... And I look at the original thing that I'd written, and it wasn't that far off, but it was just crap, you know, because the, the things that were missing were so necessary, and he just very easily p kind of... Bam, you know, and we, and the thing is. But would he have done that necessarily? Was it your part of it that inspired him? Oh, right, you know that's my mean? point. Like yeah. Well, like Sundancer, you know, Sundancer he, he is a song about this sun, you know, was inspired by this Sundancer that I met in South Dakota and spent some time with. I thought a Sundancer was a thing in the window. What's a Sundancer? No, a Sundancer, the Sundance is a, is a, a pretty, heavy-duty religious ritual, which was banned by the U.S. government for a long time, where um, I can describe it. I mean, basically, it involves a little bit of physical mutilation, but nothing dangerous. But anyway, the sun, so, so the Sundancer has scars from, from this religious ritual, because okay. they do this piercing thing. Okay. And, um, but anyway, my friend Steve, he's obsessed with Native American spiritual, spirituality and mm -hmm. culture. And he would love to write this song, you know, but he didn't think of it because he didn't meet this guy. You know, I met this guy and, you know, and I got something from that. I learned some things and I, I started to write this guy's story. It was his story, you know, and I handed it off to Steve. And he still to this day, he, he doesn't even like to take writing credit for, for that one because... You know, it, it was a, not a fifth, probably not a 50-50 co-write, but whatever. They all work out in the end. Right. You know, when you're working with someone regularly. But the point is, like, he says, I should have written this song years ago. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but the point was, I was there, and I was listening, and I experienced something, you know, and, and then yeah. I was able to, I was able to, like a, an infant crawling around in the woods with their eyes closed, just get enough of it down that I can hand it to this person who is a really, he's a like masterful writer. He's a really great writer. So are you. And, well, you know. Hmm. But he, and he was able to just, you know, finish it off and, and come up with, you know, music for it that was really appropriate. Tear down the mountains and blacken the sky Silence my language and take my fire Still I survive 
I was here before you came, I was given this land These hills and plains know the feel of my hand Still I survive The wind in this land echoes my people's names Echoes of my dreams Turn with the rain, still I survive. You can slander my customs and categorize, assimilate me, make me stand in line, still I survive. I was born. Since the beginning, the same wind, this very moment, whispering my name. The bones in my face testify. The scars on my chest cannot lie. Passed down through the ages, the sweet grass and sage, my grandfather's grandfather's secrets remain. Still, I survive. Bled into the soil beneath my feet. When I dance, these memories come back to me. Still, I survive. Pain and sacrifice waking me. Sun dancers set my people free. Still I survive. The bones in my face testify. The scars on my chest can I lie? I think music, the thing about music is that intellectual things aren't important. Music connects with human beings in a very primal way. I think the thing that's different about music than other arts is that, you know, every art form is a combination of the intellectual and the, and the heart and the gut, you know, all working together on the two sides of the brain, all processing it. Yeah. But music is just so much gut. Yes. You feel it. And mm -hmm. people, you know, people feel it. It's like when, when you play and there's little kids around and a little kid will get into some like trance dance and will just go, <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know, and they cannot prevent themselves from doing it because they feel it and they move. Yeah. And yeah. adults do that, but they don't realize it. Right. They tap things yeah. and they hold move back. things and they're not aware that they're doing it. Yep. And I, but not like yeah. when you were a kid. I not think, like yeah. when you're a kid, yeah. then, then you have no... 
you have no ego about it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I'm a producer too. I produce a lot of people. And it can be very hard to just listen to music, not be a producer. And being a producer ruins the experience of listening to music. Because you, I listen to it and I think, I hear this and I hear that and, and this and this and all these things. Are so all you deconstruct it. Into, yeah, it's all intellectual crap. Mm. And I have to kind of get all of that out of my head and I have mm. to just say, forget all that. Yeah. What is this saying to you in your gut? And then just li you know, and, and, and just feel it. And, and so it gets that out of the way and then I can listen to music and just feel it and enjoy it. Not think about that stuff, you know. So it's like when I hear somebody say, I don't have an intellectual connection to music, I think Thank that's God. great. so beautiful If only you could see you as I see you You'd be in love with you too You're so beautiful One of those sped up Films of a flower, swollen but the brilliance in a moment. The sound of your crying after it's over. The voice of God saying, I love you. The voice of God saying, I do. The voice of God saying, I love you. You're so beautiful If only you could feel your hands on my back You'd be in love with you too You're so beautiful An engine that's choking Starts anyway. You fuel me up, keep me alive. The energy rushing after so long in decay. The feel of God's hands on my face. It's the feel of God's hands on my face. The feel of God's hands on my face. I'll just be here with eyes open wide It's not for me to question why I'll be here with heart open You're so beautiful If only I could see you again You'd see that my love's not waning You're so beautiful
is there something else I need to say? Is there something you need to say? Yes, all of our CDs are available at cdbaby.com and iTunes and other various uh, outlets online and all. <laughs> I, got, I got one more thing I want to add. You are a poet. And let me tell you something. Right back at let you, me tell Fred. You something.